a couple of interesting things I want to share with you that people have pointed out. Um, one of the things is if we do this square and we want to have that be symmetrical around this axis and this axis, we can literally pick this corner, this corner, the center point of the axis and hit symmetrical. And now it's symmetrical um, that way and that way which is really cool if it stays as a square. The only time it breaks is if you start mucking with this edge, which is what we did in the last video, and that will break that symmetry. But that's still very cool. Now, if I close that, and I just create a quick um, pad from that. So we're going to do it like this, and then what we're going to do is I like to turn on the origin like that. Okay, so the next one is we are going to put this date and plane onto this guy and right now you can see the date and plane is actually on that um, axis and what we're going to do is we're going to go to the Z offset or the Z offset if you want my country um, we're going to say pad dot length and so that length and then I'm going to divide that by three just for grins and giggles. Now that's going to be one third the way along that pad. So if I zoom in there, no matter what size that gets to, I'm just going to say OK to that. And I'm going to turn off those origins now. And so if you watch me change this pad length, there we go. I'll make that 20. And you'll see. Now the date and plane is actually one third the way through the pad's length. The length is this way, which is the way it's extruded. Nevertheless, is a very useful tip that you can set it up from the pad. Then you don't need a spreadsheet to set it up if that's the only um, date and plane that you want to put in. And of course, this will help you when it comes to the topology issue. So uh, that being said, now we're going to have a look at some other stuff. So the next thing I want to show is how to do a revolve. I'm going to revolve a piece onto the end here. Uh, again, I'm going to do another date and plane. Pop that date and plane up on the side there. Move the offset. So I bring it up somewhere around the middle. Doesn't, and again, it's not important, but I'll just pop it in to the middle there. We'll say OK. Then we're going to do a sketch on that date and plane. And I would just move that guy over there. Move on my um, setup because I'm in this blender mode. To rotate is this, the middle button. Just hold it down and that goes with the rotate. Press the two outside buttons, so the left and right mouse at the same time. You can move it left and right. One thing I found really useful is sometimes you'll be in this view and you want to see it straight on from the sketch view. This little button up here, just press that and you're straight onto the sketch view. Now I'm going to do is I'm just going to create um, some geometry here. So let's say we'll start here. We'll go in between those two guys there. Now that should be all solid, so looks pretty good. So we're going to say OK in my sketch. Close him up. Turn on that pad again. And now you can see I've got all guy here. I should be able to revolve and make a circular piece. So if I select that sketch and I hit revolve, uh, when it disappears, that's never a good sign. So you can change the axis. And there you go. It's kind of what I wanted, but not quite. So if you look at this right now, you can see there's no taper on that. And that's because the wrong piece is revolving. It is revolving around the outside of it because it's revolving around the wrong axis. So let's see what we can do to fix that. So if we go back here, I want it to revolve around this axis. So I'm just going to turn off that date and plane for a minute. Bring this back into the center. And what I'm going to show you is you can use a date and line. And I select this line. Now there's the date and line. I say OK. Now I'm going to select my sketch. I'm going to say revolve. And this time I'm going to select this date and line, and boom. 
Now I have my piece that revolved around my datum plane. So you can see, you can do that around any datum plane. So it, it actually has revolved and made a, a piece on there, a little handle kind of thing. So that took me a little while to figure that out, but now I figured it out, I want to share it with you. And okay, so one other thing I wanted to show you was the, the spreadsheet, but using it um, to manipulate a sketch uh, for a truly parametric part. So if we go and create a part, I'm using just a polyline here. I'm just going to create a part this way. So we got a part and what we're going to do is constrain this part. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create some geometry constraints. What I try and do when I constrain a sketch is I always try and constrain with geometric constraints before I start putting dimensions on there. And the reason I do that is because I want to make sure that the physical shape is what I want and then I can change the dimensions of that shape and I also when I dimension it I try to dimension the parts that are important for the functionality so obviously uh, depends on what you're creating but if if the um, dimensions certain areas of, of the part are important those are the parts you want to be dimensioning so uh, let's go ahead and finish up this constraint so we're going to do this guy and this guy we're going to make them symmetrical around that we're going to take this guy and this guy and we're going to make them symmetrical around that and we're going to make these guys horizontal and we're also going to make these guys vertical so now you can see the shape is sort of coming into what we want it to be. So I'm going to take those two points and tell them that they're going to also be symmetrical. And now we're starting to get it locked up here. So one thing I also do is I try moving it to see what moves, what doesn't move. And that'll give you an idea of how to dimension this thing. So an important dimension to me is this guy here. So I want that to be a certain amount. And we're going to say OK. And I want this guy to be a certain amount. So we're going to say OK. And you can see these are tiny dimensions at the moment, but it's uh, not a big deal. And then in my um, part, this dimension to, from here to here is important. So I'm going to go from this point to this point. And I'm going to dimension that. And I always like to try and pull the dimensions out so they look a little bit tidier. And then you can see I've only got two degrees of freedom now. So obviously that width um, is important. And the line on the right doesn't know that it's equal to the line on the left. So I'm going to say you guys are now equal. And then I'm going to say you have width. And one degree of freedom. And that one degree of freedom is where is this point in relation to this point here. So everything's dimensioned off here. So I think the important point is going to be to dimension to like that to, to dimension from here to here. I dimension that. Now what I've done is I've basically made this part here as our datum, and then I've brought that to that point. So that locks everything up, and we are now fully constrained. So you can see from here that I have several dimensions that I can then put in the spreadsheet and use them to drive this sketch. So to do that, what we're going to do is we are going to start the spreadsheet. And then I can start to put these constraints in. So I'm going to open that guy up again and I can call this one here. I'm going to call overall width and I'm going to make that 2.5 and remember to set this up we have to set up an alias here so that to, that overall width is going to be overall width OW and that's going to be its alias so this 
just to be clear, this is just for me to see what that dimension is. The actual uh, alias is what the sketch knows that dimension to be. So don't be confused by that. This overall width is just a label. This is the actual name of that dimension. So then we're going to say overall height, which will be this dimension here. So we're going to say overall height. And I'm going to make that 5. And I'm going to give that an alias. So OH. to then um, make this sketch equivalent to the spreadsheet. I literally just open those dimensions, hit that little blue guy, say spreadsheet. There it is right there. And that's going to be OW. And say OK. And you immediately see that's gone to 2.5. And then this one is going to be minor width. So we're going to go here. We have to say spreadsheet again. So I just pick it off here and say MW. Pick it off there. You can see immediately the dimension shows up. And boom. So now, and notice they also go orange. That means they're driven from somewhere else and not something that you've manually input. So this is going to be minor height and I don't think that's what it's going to be bigger. So again, spreadsheet dot mh. That makes that 1.2. And then this guy is going to be um, overall height so we're going to say spreadsheet oh h it's going to be five boom and that is the size that we want it to be and now if i close that sketch and i pad that sketch out i take this sketch and oh, i have to go back into my part design Pad my sketch and just pad it to in the middle. There it is, padded at two. So obviously my um, overall width should probably be more than 2.5. So let's make that five. And my minor width should be three. And then my overall height should be 10. And my minor height should be three. So now you can see I have a fully parametric model that I can drive all of those dimensions from here. And so now you have a fully parametric model that's driven from this spreadsheet. And, and of course, I did everything from this datum. So if I was fitting this into a place where this dimension was important or this dimension was important, I can drive that. I'm driving that from these guys here. So hopefully that helps with the spreadsheet part. It's a very powerful tool, particularly if you're making things where you want to be able to just make minor adjustments. It saves you going into the sketch and messing with it. And obviously you can have multiple sketches that are driven from a spreadsheet. So once again, if you've enjoyed this video, uh, I'd appreciate it if you would like it. And I would appreciate if you would subscribe to the channel because we've got lots more stuff coming up. Uh, next one, I'm going to actually do a model that we manufacture. So I'm going to actually do the path, um, create the paths in the path workbench and then put it on my CNC and I'll show you how it machines. Uh, I've already done a few things now and I'm getting quite comfortable with it and I feel uh, it's a pretty good replacement for what I was doing with Fusion.